How's it going, folks? Um, so I got cut off on the last video, so I'm gonna I'm retaking this right now. Uh, but we are here today to talk about model number three. Model number three should be our last model in the sequence of mechanical models that we are making here. Um, from this, we'll go ahead and get into additive manufacturing and then eventually get into our next project, which we're excited about. But today, let's go ahead and get started right now with model number three. As we know, we start by selecting create, document, and we're going to go ahead and type in model number three. Hit create public document. And we are brought into our work plane where we will see our, or our workspace where we will see our work planes. As most of our other models, we are going to start with our top view. So I'm going to go ahead and hide my front view and right view, as you know I like to do. I'll click my top view, and then I can go ahead and click sketch. This will open up my sketch number one right on that top plane. And at this point, I can hide my top plane and just look at my sketch plane and my origin. Since I just talked about my origin, let's, uh, let's use it as our first reference point. So I'm going to grab my center point rectangle, go up to rectangle, hit the drop down arrow. I'm going to click on the center point or the origin there, and I am going to drag it out and click. We'll notice referencing the drawing. At this point, most of you should be referencing the drawing. So, at, so try to not use the screen recording. Try to follow the drawing. If you're still struggling for whatever reason, you can follow up by using the screen recording or asking me questions. But let's go ahead and, uh, and get started. So this first, uh, this first extrusion or sketch that we're going to make is the base of the model, right? We're starting with our top plane. So we're building bottom up right now. If we're looking at our drawing, we notice from the front view that our overall width is going to be two. And we'll notice from our, uh, our side view that our depth is going to be 0.25. Hit enter, and we're left with that rectangle. Now, there are actually quite a few other things that we are going to do with this first sketch here. We'll notice there's a bit of a cutaway whenever we look at, um, whenever we look at the, the model itself. So in order to create this cutaway, I'm going to grab my line tool and I'm going to use the center point of this line as a reference. We see an orange square that tells us we're there. Go ahead and click and I'm going to drag to the left. And in this case, I'm going to drag to the left 0.25. The reason I'm doing this is because I know that I have a radius of 0.25, uh, which means I have a diameter of 0.5 on this. So if I grab my corner, rectangle swap on over to your corner rectangle and I clicked at the end of that 0.25 line I'm going to click I'm going to go ahead and drag this out and I am going to drag it out actually um, to to the origin and click and this width as I just mentioned our radius is 0.25 so our overall width is going to be 0.5 and that's it I have 1.25 so you can just go ahead and click Although, since it hit the origin, it doesn't like that. So we'll hide that dimension. Awesome. Awesome. So we're left with this. I can go ahead and delete those if, you know, if they getting are getting in your way. Now, we notice that this has a two rounded corners if we look at the model. So we all know at this point to round our corners, we're going to use our fillet tool. Grab the fillet tool and we will click and we will click. And we want this radius to be set at 0.25. So you can go ahead and enter that in there and you have your radius set. The other thing you'll notice is there's a radius on both of these corners. So we can go ahead, same with that radius tool. And funny enough, these are our same radius of 0.25. So we can click, click and enter as well. And we are left with our nice rounded piece. There's one last thing we're gonna do in sketch number one. And that is actually to open up this center area using your trim tool, looks like a pair of scissors. You're gonna click. You're going to click, you're going to click until all of this is open. Kind of just like that. So this is basically what you should be left with with our sketch number one. Go ahead, hit your green check mark to finish the sketch. Hit isometric to get that nice viewpoint. And for this, we'll use our extrude tool. That's the tiny box, big box. Looking at our model, we have a little bit of different dimensions in this one. We see some... Um, some eighth inch increments. And for this one, our base is actually set at 0.625, which is our 5 eighths dimension. I'm gonna hide the origin just so it's out of the way. And we are left with our base. Beautiful, beautiful. 
So the next step here is creating our vertical member in the back. In order to do that, I am going to click my top plane of my, uh, my first extrusion, and I'm going to select sketch. Sketch number two directly on the top plane of my model here. So I can go ahead, right click, view normal sketch plane. Looking at the drawing, we'll notice that uh, from the top view, the depth of this vertical member in the back is 0.5 of an inch, and it goes the entire width of our model. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll grab my corner rectangle, I'll slide it out, and I'll click. And that's going to be at 2, which we don't have to worry about. We'll delete that, and that is going to be set at 0.5, which is that depth there, right? So we can see that we have that back rectangle there. And that is all we're doing for sketch number two. Go ahead, hit that green check mark, right click, isometric. Cool. Let's go ahead and do the exact same thing we did with the last one, and that's an extrude. So we're going to go here. Let me give us some room. We're going to go, and I'm actually going to show you a pretty cool, uh, a pretty cool feature here. So when I click extrude, as we know, we're going to click the sketch that we want to extrude. That's our back sketch. And something a little different here. We have an overall height of four. Right, so we all know we already have our base, so we need to subtract the height of our base from four to get the height that we need to extrude here. This program is smart enough where I can type in four minus the height of my base, which is 0.625, enter, and it's gonna do that math for me. It's brilliant, right? I love it. I'd hate doing my own math. I love whenever you know the program can do it for me. So once you've done that uh, and you've done those calculations, you can go ahead and hit your green check mark and you are done with that, uh, that extrusion. The next step I like to do is kind of round off both of these corners using my 3D fillet tool. And knowing that I have an overall width of two, we're gonna set our radius here at one in order to get that perfect meet at the top. You can see we have that perfect uh, kind of, you know, meeting directly at the top there. Awesome. We now have to create this cylinder that extrudes outward from the front. So to do that, I'm going to start a sketch on the front plane here, and I'm going to select sketch. We see we have that sketch plane, sketch number three, I believe, uh, sitting right on that front plane. View normal to sketch plane. And for this one, we are creating literally one circle. Grab the center point circle tool, move to the center of the circle of that kind of curve on the top, and you'll see you get that uh, orange Square, we're going to click that. We're going to drag it out to the edge, and we are we should get a dimension of a two-inch diameter. Uh, make sure that's correct, and then you can go ahead and finish your sketch. Isometric, it flips around for you. Once again, we're going to hit the extrude, and once again, we're going to extrude this out. Now, this math is a little bit easier, so I'm just going to do it in my head. We know that we have a overall uh, depth of two on this top piece from my side view. And we know that we have a depth of 0.5 from my back piece that we've already created. So we should adjust this to 1.5, hit the green check mark. If I look at my right view, you'll notice that it doesn't extend all the way out, which is exactly what we're looking for. Go back to isometric. And this time we are going to start a sketch on this front cylinder that we just created. So go ahead, click that front circle, click sketch, and this is gonna be our sketch number for almost our last sketch, second to last. This one, we're actually gonna create a couple circles. So grabbing the center point circle tool, we'll go ahead and select on, and you'll see we get to the center point of the circle, we get that orange square. What we're looking for, go ahead and click. The first thing, uh, the first circle we're gonna create is 1.75 inch diameter, and it's a counter bore with a depth of 0.375. So all 1.75, enter. There we go. And the next circle we're going to make has a, a radius of 0.625. Uh, since it has a keyhole in it, it reads as radius. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply that by 2 to get my diameter. That diameter is going to be at 1.25. So go ahead, type in that 1.25 and enter. I'm going to delete these just so that they're out of the way because we have to do a couple of other things here. This smaller circle has a keyhole set out in it. Uh, a lot of different, you know, machined out parts have keyholes for specific purposes, um, whatever they may be. So we're going to go ahead and create this keyhole. In order to create the keyhole, it has a overall width of 0.5. So the first thing I want to do is use the center point 
drag it straight down with my dotted line until I get the perfect bottom of my uh, circle. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this out. It has an overall width of 0.25. So what I actually want to do is come over half of that, and that's 0.125, uh, and come over 0.125 as basically just a reference point. Now, what I'm going to do is grab my corner rectangle. I'm going to use this reference point and move up to my circle. I do not want to go from the line. I want to go from the circle. So go to the top of the circle, click. We are going to drag over and click. And this distance, like I said, all the way across is 0.25. Now, this distance, uh, looking at our side view, we see is 0.1. So we're going to type 0.1, enter. Escape. We can go ahead and uh, delete our reference line. And we're actually going to use the trim tool, the scissors tool, in order to snip, snip, and get rid of that. Again, we have an overall width of 0.25, an overall depth on this of 0.1. See that right there. Cool. That's what we're going to do for this sketch here, these two circles and that keyhole. Go ahead and hit your green, uh, green check mark, right click, isometric. Once again, that extrusion tool, our best friend. The first extrusion is this circle right here, and it is going to be set in at a remove of a counterboard depth of, sorry, 0.375. So 0.375, enter, and we're going to go ahead and hit that green check mark. Uh, so 0.375 set in there. Uh, we are actually going to do an additional extrusion here. So if I go ahead and click extrude one more time, I'm going to click this outer uh, keyhole one that we have. I'm going to hit remove. And this one's going to go all the way through. So if I want to, I can select through all and it's going to go through my whole model. I hit my green check mark and you can see that it goes all the way through. So that's that beautiful keyhole there. There is one more sketch and then one more thing we have to do before we wrap this up. So the last sketch is actually going to happen on the, uh, on the front of my model here. So if I go right here, I can go ahead, actually not on the front, in this keyhole itself. There's a few different ways we're going to do it, but this is the way I am going to do it just because I think it's quick and easy. I'm going to click right in the bottom of the keyhole, and I'm going to click sketch. It's going to start a sketch on the bottom of the keyhole. Using... Uh, the line tool in the center of the front of the keyhole. I am going to click. I am going to drag directly back and I am going to click. Now we'll notice that from our drawing, it has a distance of 1.125. We already have a depth here of, uh, of 0 0.375. So we want to make sure that we're kind of making up that difference, right? If you want to go in basically one. 0.125, oh, sorry, that's a, yeah, 1.125 minus 0.375, you will definitely get your correct distance. Now we'll notice it's a pretty easy one, this one's 0.75 here. The next thing we're going to do is grab our center point circle and click at the end of that three-fourths inch line we created and click, drag it out and click. The size of this circle we're going to create is 0.25, which is just the size of the keyhole. And we can get rid of this reference line if we want. So all we're left with is this 0.25 inch circle set three-fourths of an inch back in our model. Again, there's a couple ways you can do it, but this is the way I like to. We're going to hit our green check mark, and we're going to hit extrude. I'm going to go ahead and click my, uh, my, my cylinder I just created, and we are going to bring this up at a distance of two. And I'm going to change it to a remove. I'm going to flip the direction. So it goes out the top and I'll hit my green check mark. So now we have that kind of uh, that lock set that locks in whatever is going through this opening here. Go ahead, hit isometric and you are one step away from being done. The very last step we're going to do is grab our fillet tool. Our fillet is going to be set at this bottom edge and that top edge and the fillet radius is going to be set at point. 25, just like our other one. Set it at 0.25. We'll click the bottom. We'll click the top. And that is our last step. I'm going to go in, edit appearance, change the color. 
hit my green check mark, and then as we all know, hit the three lines, select print, make sure it fits inside that window, and we are going to hit download image.